Have you ever arrived at the beginning of a new week and been like, nah, I'm just over it. I don't wanna cook, I don't wanna think about meal planning. I am sick and tired. And that was the boat I was in quite literally this past week because we had a very busy weekend, I didn't get a lot of rest, and I was recovering from a cold. So in this video, I'm taking you through vlog style what we ate each night for dinner. I was looking for super easy recipes that I could throw together with like less than 15 minutes, less than 10 minutes, less than five minutes worth of work. So so hopefully there are some ideas for you if you ever find yourself in a similar boat. Achoo! It is Monday and I am sick and tired. Not like sick and tired, but like sick and tired. <laughs> <laughs> I've been battling this head cold um, that my family's been passing around for a few days. Unfortunately, I feel better than I sound or than I look. <laughs> I am, I'm kind of at the tail end of it, but uh, my husband is taking care of getting the kids to and from places tonight, and I am really phoning it in on the dinner. But it's gonna be delicious, and it's gonna get us all fed, and it'll be fine. I just threw some baked potatoes in the oven, and I'm gonna slice up some smoked sausages and saute those for a few minutes, and put some barbecue sauce over the top of them, and everybody will be able to just make baked potatoes. And normally I would do the sausages in like a frying pan or something, like in a pan. What's that? Boy, I really am tired and sick. <laughs> sick and tired. In a skillet. Normally I would do it in a skillet. But I'm gonna pull my multi-function slow cooker out and do, use the saute function and then switch it over to slow cook when I put the barbecue sauce in so it'll keep it warm because everybody's kind of coming and going from practices and things tonight but this mom is just gonna plop down in the rocking chair for the rest of the evening. This is a bread box that I keep on my counter. It's supposed to hold all of the bread, but where is the bread? <laughs> on top of the bread box. I wonder, what is somebody thinking? Are they thinking, that's a great display for random bread and bread products. Let's just stick everything on top of here instead of just opening it up and putting it inside, maybe because there's other stuff in there that needs to go. No, there's plenty of room, see? The bread goes in the bread box. There, I fixed it. Brick is finishing up an artist biography project for school and one of the things he had to do was recreate one of the artist's artworks um, like using his own medium and so he decided to recreate it using Legos. So leave me a comment below if you can name this artwork. If you recognize it, if you can tell what it is, bonus points if you know the artist's name as well. Maybe if you have an art background, you'll know. Normally, I would use two smoked sausage links, like two packages of smoked sausage. I just did one tonight because I think that I'm probably just gonna heat up some soup for myself and probably call it an early night, take some medicine and get to bed and get some good rest and really nip this little sickness in the bud and this is real life <laughs> i try to be realistic on this channel and if we're being real sometimes kids are sick sometimes moms are sick and i'm just like your everyday average ordinary person out here <laughs> trying to run my household so nothing fancy it is tuesday i am feeling so much better my parents are here hanging out they are going to the eagles concert so they're just taking it easy see what i did there <laughs> I am going to make a cheesy taco pasta for dinner tonight. It has just three ingredients. It's coming from a website called The Smart Schoolhouse. I will leave a link in the description box below. It is my kind of recipe, not just because there were only three ingredients, but because it's also one of those semi-homemade recipes that combines fresh ingredients with a convenience item. And in this case, the convenience item is box mac and cheese. I'm gonna use the shells and cheese because I don't even have to get the butter or the milk out. I can just make up the pasta while I'm cooking up the other ingredients and then to make it cheesy, the cheese packets are already in here. I am just finishing up browning one pound of ground beef. And now I'm gonna add one can of diced tomatoes with green chilies, brand name Rotel, to my pot with the ground beef. I'm interrupting here to say that I spoke incorrectly earlier when I said this was only three ingredients. There is in fact a fourth ingredient and it is taco seasoning. I am fresh out of my homemade taco seasoning, but fortunately I have a packet in the pantry. So that's what I'm gonna toss in here before we move on. My pasta only has about a minute left to cook, but before I drain it, I'm gonna add just a few spoonfuls of the pasta water to my pot. Since I'm using a packet mix, 
A lot of times those have cornstarch in them. I actually put it in my homemade mix too, but it has thickeners in it, so I wanna make sure that as this simmers, it doesn't dry out too much. So I'm adding about a third of a cup of pasta water to it. I think other kinds of box mac and cheese would work well with this. I personally decided not to use a frozen or a refrigerated ready-made mac and cheese. I was afraid that the noodles would just end up being really mushy. Since I'm using a box mac and cheese, I can cook the noodles to al dente so that then they'll finish cooking when I mix it in with everything else. That was just my thinking on the matter. This has been simmering for just two or three minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat off. I'm gonna add my cooked pasta, which I drained, and my cheese sauce packets. And I'm just gonna stir this all together, and it will be ready. I can get a pound of ground beef for about six bucks, and the box mac and cheese that I'm using, the great value brand of the shells and cheese, costs about $1.50 a box, plus a can of diced tomatoes with green chilies for under a buck. So this recipe is coming in <laughs> under $10, which is really great as well, especially for a convenience recipe. Give me a thumbs up if you grew up eating rosy applesauce in your school cafeteria. That is what I made to go along with this dinner tonight. It is just two ingredients, it's so easy. It's a big container of applesauce and then a small container of Jello, a small package of Jello. We chose the strawberry flavor, that's what makes it rosy. I think it works with other flavors as well. And I'm pretty sure that you can use sugar-free if you want, but I just bought the standard Jello. I mixed that up a few hours ago and put it in the refrigerator to chill because I think it's better cold. So I'm gonna serve that along with this cheesy taco pasta and I'm just gonna probably steam some veggies, just steam in the bag veggies to go along with it. And that's gonna be dinner tonight, probably less than 15 minutes of work total. I was really happy to have my Good Shop box this week because having high quality meats delivered right to my door can be a big help at a time like this. And Good Shop is sponsoring today's video. They're offering $120 off so stay tuned. One of the things that I love about Good Shop is that they source everything from right here in the U.S. Things like grass-fed beef, free-range and organic chicken, wild-caught salmon. In fact, they have over 60 different items you can select from to customize your box. They'll deliver it right to your door. And I like the idea that by choosing Good Shop, I'm supporting some local family farms and independent ranchers right here in the United States. You have heard my husband and I rave about the quality of Good Shop's steaks. In fact, we're throwing a few of those on the grill this weekend. But in this video, I'm using their ground beef, I'm using their chicken breast, I'm using their pork chops. They have so much to offer. Plus, with Good Shop, I know that I'm getting cuts of meat that have no antibiotics or no added hormones ever. I'm getting good quality meat delivered right to my door. If you haven't tried Good Chop yet, now is a great time to sign up. They're offering $120 off across your first four Good Chop boxes. You can sign up by following the link in the description box below or going to goodchop.com slash YouTube and then use my code CMindyMom120 at checkout for that $120 off. And again, thank you to Good Chop for the delicious meat and for sponsoring today's video. It is Wednesday and it's still fairly early in the afternoon, but I'm gonna get dinner going here pretty quickly because we have church activities tonight and I am going to make a recipe from one of you the viewers a few weeks back I posted a question in my community post tab on my channel asking you all to share some no fail tried and true favorite recipes for pork chops and boy did you guys deliver. I have enough recipes to try that I could probably make videos on this one concept for a month and still not run out of ideas. But there was one sort of at the top of the list. It is from a longtime viewer, Alma, and it has a bunch of thumbs up as well, which indicates to me that maybe you guys wanna see it. So that's what we're gonna make tonight. This recipe has just four ingredients. Alma's recipe uses eight pork chops, but I have four fairly large boneless pork chops, so I'm just gonna go with four. I have one eight ounce container of prepared French onion dip. I got this from the refrigerated section, not the jar section that you would find over with the chips. And you're just supposed to spread that over the top of the pork chops. I'm gonna use this whole container so I'm not worried about contaminating it. This is probably why you would want eight pork chops instead, because this is a lot of dip, but these are fairly large pork chops, so we're just gonna go with it. Next, you sprinkle some cheddar cheese on top. I thought about using like a Swiss or an Italian blend cheese as well, but Alma specifically said to use cheddar, so that's what we're gonna go with. Next up, some crispy onions. 
These are actually the garlic pepper crispy onions. I get these from the salad section, so they've got a little bit of seasoning. Those on top. Now just pop this into a 350 degree oven uncovered until the pork chops are done. Will probably take mine around 35 to 45 minutes is what I'm guessing. I'm thinking this is fairly rich with the dip and the cheese and the onions. So I'm gonna go with a very, very plain starch. I'm just gonna make up some plain rice to go along with these and also probably a salad. I really like the bag salad kits as a shortcut, but I always feel like there's not quite enough in here, at least not for my family. It says there are four servings in here once you make it up, but they would be very small. So I'm always adding things to these to kind of bulk them up, make the serving size larger and add a few extra veggies. So tonight I'm gonna add this bag of of chopped romaine. Looks like somebody's already been in that, making some salads this week. And also maybe chop up a few cucumbers to go in there. Occasionally I will pick up the coleslaw mixes that have cabbage and carrots or the broccoli slaw mixes. Those are veggies that are already cut up and pre-washed, so really easy to combine them with the back salad kits and use the other dressing and toppings that are in there to just make a larger serving of a side salad for my family. It is Thursday. We are almost to the weekend, hooray. And I got to be on Channel 6 here in Tulsa again today. I was presenting the emergency bin meal ideas that I featured in a recent video. If you missed that video, I'll leave it linked in the description box below. But I'm gonna get some dinner going and I think I'm gonna make some dessert tonight too because I saw a really interesting easy dessert recipe we're gonna try tonight and see how it is. So I have right here two packages of Knorr rice sides. This is the broccoli cheddar and this is the chicken. And I'm just gonna pour those right into the baking dish. One can of cream of chicken. Normally I would make this myself, but we're pressing the easy button today. Plus one can of milk. This would be about a cup, a little bit less than one can full would be one cup of milk. And one 14 and a half ounce can of chicken broth is just shy of two cups. I wanna just mix this all together carefully, I don't wanna spill it, <laughs> but I'm gonna mix it right here in the baking dish. And then I'm going to top it with a package of frozen broccoli cuts. This is just the cut broccoli. You could use broccoli florets, but I'm okay with the cut broccoli because it's gonna get nice and tender as it bakes up with everything else. Now I have four chicken breasts. I'm just gonna place them right on top here of my rice and broccoli mixture. I'm gonna season these with a little bit of garlic salt, paprika, and pepper. Then I'm gonna to top the whole thing with shredded cheese. Oops, <laughs> I just spilled it all over the counter. <laughs> I'm gonna bake this at 350 covered for 30 minutes. And then I'm gonna remove the foil and let it bake until the chicken is done. We'll probably take an extra 10 to 20 minutes. I'll use my meat thermometer just to check and see how the chicken is doing and take it out when it's done. This is our favorite way to eat frozen green beans. I buy the kind that can steam in the bag. And after they're done cooking, I cut the corner off and drain the water out of the bag. Then I'll just cut the top off and I'll put a little bit of butter in there. Mix it around so the butter melts. Then I add a little bit of breadcrumbs. Just a tablespoon or two. A couple teaspoons of grated Parmesan cheese. Give it a shake and they're ready to serve up. Oh, that is good. The chicken's actually really flavorful and tender. It doesn't really taste dry or overcooked. The rice and the broccoli cooked up beautifully. Everything is well seasoned. This is a winner. Two thumbs up. If I have two thumbs to hold up. <laughs> I saw this idea on Pinterest for two ingredient lemon bars. So super easy dessert idea. And especially with Easter on the horizon, I thought this might be a good one to try out. It's just an angel food cake mix and a can, a 21 ounce can of lemon pie filling. And my first store didn't have the lemon pie filling, so I went to another store, and this is the Duncan Hines lemon cream pie filling, so I hope that that's the same thing. But basically you just mix these two things together and then spread it into a greased or parchment lined nine by 13 pan. You bake it in the oven at 350 for around 25 minutes and then let it cool down for a few hours before serving it. And I thought it might be good with some powdered sugar dusted on top and maybe some fruit and some whipped topping. 
for like a light fluffy springtime dessert, we're gonna give that a try. Another quick tip, I would not recommend using an electric mixer or a stand mixer. You need to mix this by hand if you don't want powdered angel food cake mix all over yourself and maybe your kitchen. <laughs> Can I just say I had no idea how expensive angel food cake mix is? This was $3.50. I mean, this is still a really cheap dessert <laughs> as desserts go, but as cake mixes go, $3.50 seems like a lot. This is the kind you just add water to, but for this recipe, you do not add the water. You're just supposed to mix the pie filling with the cake mix. Just wanted to come on here and reiterate that you don't add any other liquids to this. Now these lemon bars are not gooey like traditional lemon bars, or at least how I think of lemon bars, but that's okay with me because I don't actually care for those as much. These are a little fluffier, not as fluffy as regular angel food cake because of the lemon pie filling, but really pretty good. It is Friday morning. We are almost to the weekend. And I'm going to confess that I actually made tonight's dinner last night in addition to the cheesy broccoli chicken and rice because I wasn't sure how it was gonna work or even if it was going to work. I pulled out ye old Instant Pot, which I rarely do, if you know from watching my channel, and I made a soup from a frozen lasagna. And I gotta tell you, it might be my favorite meal that I made all week. I'll leave a link to the website where I saw this. I can't remember off the top of my head the name of it. I'll try to put a pin right here if it's on Pinterest. And she actually did it using the slow cooker. That's where I got the idea from, but I changed mine up a bit, so let me tell you how I did it. Into the bottom of my Instant Pot, I poured one jar of prepared pasta sauce, and then I used about three cups of broth. I've been trying to use up this veggie broth that I've had in my pantry, so I actually poured it into the pasta sauce jar and shook it up and poured it in so I could get the rest of that yummy pasta sauce out of the jar and into the soup. I used a 35 ounce meat lasagna that I got at Walmart. It's not the big one that feeds like 10 or 12 people. It's not the little individual serving size one. It's kind of in the middle. I think it says four to five servings. And I'll be honest, I let that thaw on the counter for a couple of hours and it was still frozen, but just soft enough that I could slice it up into little chunks. So I placed the chunks into the Instant Pot and then I popped the lid on and sealed it. And I set it to pressure cook for 10 minutes. I let it natural release for about 10 minutes, maybe a little longer, and then I manual released it the rest of the way. And when I popped the lid off, I was absolutely delighted at what I smelled and what I saw. I just gave everything a stir, everything was cooked, it was creamy, it did not burn, at least mine did not. And I gotta tell you, it was really tasty. I was gonna get some little garlic toasts that you find in the freezer section to go along with this, but I ended up going with this loaf of cheesy garlic bread. I just followed the package instructions to make garlic toast to go along with this, and it was perfect, dipped into the soup. And I'm very pleased that I tried it because I've made lasagna soup before but it takes a little bit more work sometimes with you know browning the sausage or the ground beef and maybe using onions and garlic and different tomato products and I just topped this with a little bit of shredded mozzarella cheese or Italian blend cheese and it was very very good two thumbs up highly recommend are you subscribed to my channel yet if not, I hope you will consider it. And the YouTube machine is gonna pick out a few videos that thinks you might wanna watch next. They're right here. So if you pick one of those to watch, I'll see you there.